Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and we're going to do things a little bit differently this week. So, uh, I, I got a lot of interesting feedback in last week's review um, for Friendship is Magic comic book issue 89, 90, 91, and 92. Uh in short, season, uh, episode 1 and 2 of season 10. Well, technically it's 1, 2, 3, and 4, but who's really counting? So, uh, this is going to be a commenter's edition. So, I will go through all the comments. Well, not all, the first initial comments. And, well, uh, how do I put this? And I will address them. Yes. Uh, it's not going to be, how do I put this, it's not, it's not going to be anything fancy or whatnot, like, uh, if you know, I do reply to the comments, but this is going to be one of those things like, how much have my opinion changed since then? Um, I, I'm guessing not much because I tend not to change my opinion that much, but we we'll, shall see, we shall see. So, let's hop right into it. So, first up is oh by the way uh, no names will be mentioned um if you if you want to know who wrote what uh is in the comments and whatnot but still this is going to be fun <laughs> and talking about fun uh this is going to be for friendship is magic comic book issue 89 and 90. so uh first up is fun show guys to toss in a few random sen- sorry <laughs> to to toss in a few random scents I think Ragamuffin was mentioned to have a bit of a Boston or New England accent, not really sure. And then there was a follow-up mentioning that in the wiki, he might have a English Cockney accent. But in all honesty, I couldn't really tell. And Boston and New England, ah man, uh, the only Boston I know of is from Mark Wahlberg in his movies. I'm guessing I don't. I'm not 100 sure. And also, there's there's that one game, uh, D4, uh, that dreams don't die something like that. I don't remember. So, I'm not a master of the accents, so I got no idea. But this is kind of interesting. This is kind of interesting. So moving on, <clears throat> I see your, <clears throat> I see you're using safe words of horizon and friendship instead of the slight obvious world of imperialism and increasing their sphere of influence <laughs> uh, this seems to be a meme or this seems to be quote-unquote a theme for season 10 but nah man nah um, <laughs> I, I see what you did there and nah, to me in my honest opinion i feel like um twilight is just expanding his uh, sorry expanding her horizon like she's trying to get more friends get more allies and whatnot and well show people how friendship can be good for their living their daily lives and whatnot uh, who knows but it feels that way uh sorry um, i feel that way and we'll see how it goes because i haven't read anything of issue 80 sorry 93 and beyond so i got no idea how things are going but from what silver told me it seems to be the same deal where uh it's going to follow a g4 season one and sorry uh yeah season one episode one and two kind of structure so we we'll shall see we shall see <clears throat> so oh this is going to be a long one <clears throat> a lot of things to cover <clears throat> and now for Zakura, poor sweet little Zakura. I like her the moment I saw her when the show began and got me into watching the series, mostly because I played WoW at the time and got and I got this huge obsession for shamans or with, with shamans, including the Shaman King series. By the way, they say two thousand twenty one version of Shaman King which I'm watching and it's really good. If you have not watched Shaman King and got no idea where to start, go watch the 2021 anime. It's okay. I, I From what I understand, it's similar to the old one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't seen the old one, so I've got no idea. 
So anywho, uh, Shaman King. Yes, okay. So I was excited to see her again in this magical world we were yet to fully experience. But alas, she was done dirty first in the show because corporate influence and now Jeremy Whitley. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's see. Zakura hasn't really been in the show that... You know what, I'm going to try and change a bit. Alright, here you go. So anyway, um, Zakura hasn't been really utilized in the show much or well. Uh, we got no idea how... Sorry, we got really no idea how or who she is and how does she do stuff. She's always been this mystical um, pariah where we are just constantly thinking of who is this character? Like what is her background and what is her um, story here? Because as far as we know, as a general audience, she is a zebra from a faraway land. And she could probably, uh, sorry, um, and she's kind of an enchantress, a shaman, something like that. Uh, enchantress is one thing, but yeah, uh, that's besides the point. So anyway, um, she's kind of a mystic. Uh, Lauren Faust wanted to use her as a, another teacher for Twilight. In a sense, like how Yoda was to... Luke in the originals, the original series, the you you know what I mean. So anywho, um, that was her goal with Zakura, another teacher for Twilight to learn quote unquote magic. But as time goes on, uh, Lauren left after finishing season two, and things change. In all honesty, I got no idea what we could honestly have when we really dive into season no sorry uh, dive into the zebra lands and I, I feel like I you know I'm just gonna lay all lay all my initial thoughts here because if I do repeat them that means there's something to it uh, anyway um I, I feel like Zakura is one of those interesting characters that we don't really know uh, she is mysterious and interesting where she talks in a strange but very fascinating way. Um, she knows the art of the potion making and so on. And how is her world or how is her land and what? Like how? Where does her? Um, sorry. Um, how does her hometown look like or what? Whatever. I mean, those are the kind of things that. Uh, we as fans wonder and we got fanfic writers who write about uh, other zebras from other lands and so on and Zakura's cutie mark uh, to say was very interesting too when I first saw it and that got me thinking like wait do zebras have cutie marks too and those uh, and that has been a question that never really been answered nor addressed I think until season 10, but that's like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just a passing, passing, just, just a passing, like it wasn't really acknowledged and whatnot. So, <clears throat> okay, let's go on. Uh, Jeremy Whitley contradicts several of the show's canon points as well as, sorry, um, as well the prior comics but that wouldn't be the first time when he blatantly ignored some best <laughs> established things like how he ignored Iron's Will character's development in Fluttershy's Friends Forever issue and then he was a villain in Siege of the Crystal Empire okay for 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 this one um th this one is one of those things where it's it's strange this one because I do understand what you mean by uh, his sudden heel turn to the s dark side in Siege of the Crystal Empire and whatnot. I mean that was a really bad turn, and in all honesty, Iron Will isn't that kind of 
character to turn evil like that. He's a business pony or a business minotaur. And he's in it for the money, but try to skirt the line between what's legal and illegal. I mean, he will skim off the top on some things and try to follow the law, but, you know, he runs by oh, his own thing. Uh, there's also the whole uh, Friends Forever with Fluttershy and Iron Will and so on. I mean, the, the thing is, when it comes to the comics, it's a bit loosey-goosey in what they can do and what Hasbro wants them to do. And the Siege of the Crystal Empire has been always... <laughs> The Siege of the Crystal Empire has been this comic where, oh, um, yeah, th this is going to be really, okay, um, the comic, uh, Siege of the Crystal Empire, is going to be one of those things that is a thorn to the comic side because this is considered to be non-canon at all, and here's the reason why. Um, in Siege, uh, somehow Sombra became good and try to mend things back and try to resurrect the previous ruler princess whatever i don't know her name and they uh, he and her girlfriend galloped off to a an adventure which amount to nothing yes so for me siege is one of those things where i can just take it and throw it to a side because it doesn't really matter because Siege of the Crystal Empire was one of those books where if you don't really read it, it's not going to hurt you. They don't even really acknowledge it at all. So yeah, that, that's one of those things where for me, Siege is one of those comics I want to forget. Okay, I'm um, moving on to the next point. Okay, <clears throat> uh, to this point, the one glaring part is the fact that Zakura apparently already knew who Mage Meadowbrook was. Yet, in Health of Information, she never knows about her existence and only knew her as the mask, um, the Mystic Mask. So, that's already a big glaring contradiction. Eh, yeah. Th this is going to be one of those <coughs> things where show canon is different from comic book canon because show canon always takes priority and always can trump over um, comic book canon it's, it's been one of those things where it can be very very annoying if you want to kind of follow all the canons and that's why Disney uh, decanonized most of their extended universe stuff so that they can work in their own nutshell uh, the things that are canon is episode 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the things that they work on, and so on. I mean, some of the ideas that they have do linger, and if they like it, they use it. If they don't, they won't. And here's the same theory for this one, because Zakura not knowing Zakura knowing who Mage Meadowbrook here is and whatnot, I mean, it's one of those things where Eh, like, if you're not really paying attention or if you're not really into or how would I have the person, if you're not really keeping up with the whole thing, it's one of those things that might go over your head and it's not really a big issue. And I'm guessing this is one of those moments where, yeah, nobody's really going to remember who Mage is and yeah, the Mystic Mask, I mean, th th it's really minor detail. But at the same time, I do feel you when uh, the canons can't really work together and whatnot. And I could be wrong. This is all in show canon and they totally forget. Probably. But it's one, it's one of those things where you can't really say much. I mean, you just <laughs> this is one of those things where I just say, you just have to let it go. Like, there's no point investing or spending that energy in getting angry over this i mean it, it's been it's done so yeah let's move on to the next one <clears throat> so kura was shown to deal with mystic for mystical forces 
which goes as far back as Magical Duel, way back in season 3 when Twilight came to her uh, came to her for help against Trixie. Remember, she can she can conjure up water out of nowhere. Ah, this one is uh, hmm, how do you put this? This one is going to be one of those things where I'm just gonna say, yeah, but not really. Uh, to me, in my view or in my opinion, that moment there was to show or to tell Twilight that there's more. W there's multiple ways to deal with Trixie and maybe a sleight of hand and that's why she conjured up a cup of water like how um, uh, street, illusion street illusionists do or uh, street magicians do, do because they mostly deal in uh, sleight of hand or sleight of hoof in this case and magics and whatnot or, or sorry um, street magics and whatnot mostly illusions uh, style of hands and so on. So that was what Trix, um, Zakura was trying to tell Twilight at the time because if you have, if you use power against power, uh, only the strongest power is going to win. And in that scenario, there it's Trixie. And because uh, of how the amulet was affecting her and her thinking, it's one of those things where, yeah, you're not going to win Twilight. You, you don't have the rage to overcome her. So what you need to do is outsmart her. So that's how I view that moment there. It's not saying that, oh, she can conjure up water out of thin air. No, 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 no. It's just like, ooh, look, I have a cup of water out of nowhere. How do I do it? Um, here's this three-step guide to doing street magic <coughs> so anywho uh, and while her involvement in the comic were lacking character development it was clearly established that she deals with the supernatural where Mage Meadowbrook's capabilities are limited to curing and sorry, curing the ailments of the body you know I have to disagree on this one because as far as I remember Sakura never really dealt in the supernatural uh, most of her appearance has always been dealing with uh, ailments like mage in a sense and from what I can remember uh, she cured the main six when they got poison joke uh, she tried to help uh, Apple Bloom when she was caught lying or something like that. Oh, man. And, and so on. I mean, when when I really think about it, about this is by memory, about her whole history about dealing with the supernaturals, nothing really came to mind. Um, if you want to count the Sh Pony of Shadows with that season for episode 2 ending where or is it 1 I, I forgot what was it 2 I don't remember but anyway uh, with the eyes and stuff that was just nah that, that was just nah that was just a nah like the eyes look like zebra eyes but it was not really um and then <clears throat> mage technically yeah I mean her deal is curing ailments and whatnot but she do have potions to uh, straight uh, she do also <laughs> she also has potions for offense uh, make things grow makes things stuff I mean uh, most of her adventures are in the comics so need to check that out because I don't really remember but yeah I mean if you're a potion maker and you do know that you're going into dangerous places yeah you have to equip stuff with uh, you have to be ready for almost everything and if I'm not mistaken Mitch did that in one of the comics when she went into that zombie town hmm. so yeah there's a thing um, there is a lot of things going on here okay let's move on to the next one oh no sorry next one okay hmm. 
One time Sakura actually did have character development. However, it also gave more hints on her culture. Her and Spike's friends for her issue where she pulls an entire medical tent out of her saddlebag and states, I must dispel you of some incorrect notion. Zebra magic is more than just potions. I'm just going to continue on. Uh, there was the red line. Uh, there, this was the red line that Jeremy never should have crossed because now that he's established that there's no such thing as zebra magic, it makes the crow look like a giant liar. Okay. Um. The more I, <laughs> I'm just trying to think about it. Like, what is zebra magic? Is there anything to it? Because. I'm trying to remember because in the show, we don't really see anything for quote-unquote zebra magic because all we see was Sakura making potions and um, just be, well, um, being a potion maker and whatnot. That's, how it's, uh, that's her MO in the show. And most of the uh, comics, and I, I'm guessing I, I may need to do a refresher on uh, this uh, on the Spike and Zakura Friends Forever. But you know, I I got no idea. Like, oh man, I I wish you wrote down what was her zebra magic thingy because I can't remember. And uh, this was the red line. Okay, um. Mm, this is oh man this is one of those cases where I'm just gonna have to say <laughs> hmm it, it's, it's difficult because I do see where you're coming from because I'm trying to remember what is the quote unquote zebra magic and what does it mean so on but at the same time too when you break it down the person that says Zebra has no magic is the teacher when she was young. And later on, we see the prince have solar flare and whatnot. And yeah, unless the prince have potions stand by in his crown of sorrow, then it's going to happen. So I I'm just wondering. Is the teacher in the, I, I I stated this in the comics. Like this was what in episode ninety one, ninety two, so it, that's there. And in all honesty, it's hard for me to say uh, if Jeremy here was wrong or not. It's it's stated by a teacher who doesn't really care. And at the same time too, it's done for comedic effect. So it's one of those things where could it could this be all in Zakura's mind? I mean, it's one of those things where I mm, you know, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I, I need to read up on the comic again to see what is the zebra magic thingy. But uh, without a solid understanding I got I, I, I can't really say much. But still oh man. I'm just trying to think because, uh, you know, you know, in the comics or in 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 the second part of the comics, uh, Zakura learns magic via potion making and whatnot, and yeah, that's her way to kind of um, circums uh, circumvent the not having a horn to do magic thing. And it's basically doing potions and whatnot. I mean, potion making is a is a sort of uh, it's a kind of magic. So yay, I guess. And eh, I, I I'm just gonna end it there because without really going without really knowing much, I I can't really say much. Okay, let's move on. Okay, <clears throat> and. <clears throat> Uh, and of course, one thing that really feels like 
salt in the wound was the fact that Sakura stated that she felt lonely being the only zebra in Equestria, which is technically true. She so the idea of her being afraid of going back to Farisia because she had a spec with her friends just felt lame. You know, that's not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to change to the big camera. This is going to be quick. Uh, that's not really lame. I mean, the feeling of anger, anxiety, regret, and all those negative emotions is not lame. It's just how she dealt with it. And the thing is, uh, in the second comic, they really explain it. But um, the thing is, Zakura felt hurt by her friends not supporting her in her magic or her search for magic and whatnot. And she felt like they didn't really understand her. They don't really, they don't really want to be friends with her. Even Crystal bully her and stuff. I mean, it's yeah. Th that part is lame when they have to do that kind of excuse to push why she's angry and whatnot. But no, um, the reason was a bit petty. Yes, but it is one of her character traits. Um, she could be one of those things where, uh, through all of this, she learns and uh, grows from it. So that's one of those things that can be really good. Uh, but for now, uh, in this quote unquote um, part here, she's she's dealing with her own anxieties and whatnot. It's she decide to leave town to pursue her. Uh, search for the knowledge of magic and if she has to leave then yes um, similar to no it, the ideology is similar to Twilight but Twilight was guided there while Zakura was kind of push or kind of explored her own way to do the quote-unquote magics <coughs> Uh, but good on Silver for pointing out that glaring flaw. If Prince Abarax can use magic, where did he get it and why didn't Zakura try to learn it? That's a huge plot hole. Hmm. This is one of those things where I was questioning if the prince knows, a, knows magic, then why did that teacher say zebras can do magic? It's one of those things where it kind of riles me up. And I, I why? <laughs> and Silver's answer is just simple because the teacher did, didn't get paid enough for this and she couldn't be bothered. Uh, let's go for that. I mean, it's not really plot hole. It's just a teacher not doing her job and not really... Uh, I won't say influence, but not really guiding their student and whatnot. Ah, oh, man, that's just dumb. That that one really that that one really pisses me off. <laughs> uh, but there is a thing like if Zakura l learned from the prince about all the magic that he can do, it will be a similar Twilight Princess Celestia kind of deal. And the whole comics has already been. Um, lambasted for doing the same thing that season one was doing so yeah i don't think people want that but at the same time too it'll be interesting so ah you know what let's move on <clears throat> but at least as silver also pointed out the comic comes down to the overarching story that jeremy whitley has set up the main six parallels across uh, parallels across the world where they were six characters uh, there were once six characters one of them rejects friendship and now returns to embrace it as a reward all characters are granted power of ancient mystical MacGuffin but doesn't uh, that's all for the next two issues so yeah i mean this one is a bit lame if i wish i didn't knew this fact because 
if I didn't, it would be much interesting and I could have found out myself and be disappointed on my own. But now I do know and I just have to read and experience it for myself. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking this. I, I think I said in reply, but I, I'm thinking this. The idea here is Jeremy Whitley is using a template and it speeds things up. Like once you have that template for how things are going to go, you can speak things up. Uh, obviously, uh, let's just say that um, temp uh, you're doing a art, art thingy or whatever it is, and uh, you're kind of coloring bad guys in a beat em up. So, okay, we have this bad guy. He looks like this. He has this color. He's unique. Now, let's save time and just recolor him and put him as goon number two. And then let's recolor the third guy and name him goon number three and so on. I mean, that's been... Uh, th that's a fast and efficient way. Yet, quote-unquote lazy in this one uh, there is a overarching story plot for the um, country creatures whatever it is so they're following that template which is kind of interesting and I, I think their goal is to uh, use the template to speak things up and head to the end game where that is where the fun is going to be that is where the action and the budget is going to lie so yeah I, i'm that's my opinion on it i'm not 100 sure but i do hope that i'm right on that fact <clears throat> okay last one is the comic sakura simply isn't sakura anymore it's Korra. just like luke skywalker in last jedi is Jake Skywalker as Mark Hamill himself dubbed him? Mm, this is a hard one for me to counter or agree because it's still Sakura, but she just have she she just moved back to her own place or her own uh, country, and I don't know. I mean. I see what you mean and it's, it's, it's hard for me to figure this one out like I feel like it's okay but um, I, I see the frustration too so you know what uh, for this one I, I, I can't say much I can't say much <clears throat> okay there's more <clears throat> Whew. I need to drink some water because it's been a while Sorry. <clears throat> okay, where was I? This arc is me. <laughs> this arc it made me so god dang am angry. This is going to be a massive rant, so I'll just split it into two parts. Let's start with world building. Uh, let's just uh, let's just be clear. Jeremy Whitley isn't a bad writer by any stretch. Some of the best stories in the My Little Pony comics were written by him. Discord and the Cutie Marks, Crusaders, Luna and Discord, and Shining Armor and Prince Bluebrats, Friends Forever, Nightmare Nights, Legend of Magic, and the Return of Tempest Shadow. That being said, he also wrote a few stinkers like Siege of the Crystal Empire, which I totally agree on that one, uh, which technically wasn't bad as a whole, but it failed on the setup and the conclusion um true but that one i feel like there's a whole lot of corporate uh, uh that, what's the word i'm looking for corporate interference like that one the corporate look at it and say like okay let's go on let's go on and then suddenly wait you want to do what now uh finish up the and just stop it there it's non-canon yeah <clears throat> uh, let's see okay uh, 
Okay. He did, however, write Spike and Luna's Transformer, which was also thick on a gallery, a, a, a allegory that you could cut it with a... Uh, cut it like a cake. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here and well, um... <clears throat> Okay, 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 okay. Um, most of the top line that you mentioned, they're true. Those are really good and interesting comics. I like them a lot. And there's no argument here. Um, yeah, Chris, Siege of the Crystal Empire is not one of my favorites. And Spike and Luna was... Spike and Luna was not bad, but it was not good good uh we did get homestar pony <laughs> from silver so that's interesting uh, but the problem with the spike and luna comic of friends forever was it was more leaning heavily to spike and luna was just kind of in the background and on top of that we had the whole uh, Aguilar, uh, Aguilar <laughs> allegory where the dragons were the minority and whatnot, and like, <laughs> so that's not good at all. <clears throat> okay, and after being handed the reins of the overarching story of season ten, the problem became terribly clear. Jeremy Whitley is great at writing character interactions, but when it comes to world building, he flops terribly. And as such, it fit everything in the right setup, which became a problem of predictability further down the line in the future issues. Jeremy really destroyed the potential of not just zebra culture, but also <laughs> but assassinated Sakura's character as well. You know, mm, damn... <sighs> So the oh, well, what was that? Okay. Oh. Anyway, um, the whole season ten thing. Yeah, I mean, if it's true in what I think it's going to happen, it's going to be one of those things where ah man, you could have done better. That's not great at all. Give me a second. Oh man. Okay. <coughs> um, that's not great at all. I mean, they they should have done better and whatnot. So. World building, as far as I can tell, is a bit like cluster. They could ha there's a lot of potential, but they kind of dropped the ball on that. Like that one, I do agree because what we saw was interesting, quick pace. But you know, honestly, for them to focus heavily on the world, I feel like it has to be its own part like its own thing or its own side comic like the friends forever why not like uh maybe what the my little pony adventures in zebra land or something like that i mean it needs its own thing like i i do hope that they uh consider doing that kind of comic where uh, they focus on what each country has and what we're given here is kind of short and rush, but that's no surprise because most of the My Little Pony comics and even shows are rush. So yeah. So mm, Zagora's character, I don't think so. I mean, she's still the same. She still does her potion thingy, and I, I don't know. It's she. From my view, she kind of is still the same. Uh, she's not going to be in Ponyville any longer, so that's going to be different. But here's the thing: we need to have. Sorry, um, she needs to have her own comic, like I mentioned before, uh, My Little Pony Adventures in Zebra Land or something like that. So we can have this whole thing where we can really see how she is. As for now, we don't really know what she does or stuff because. All we know about her is that she talks, she speaks in rhymes, she makes potions, she lives in a 
spooky forest in a tree. That's about it. Other than that, uh, in the comics, we learn that she became that way because she wanted to learn, or she wanted to do magic, like the ponies of Equestria, mostly the unicorns or elecons, and she learned that she couldn't but find an alternative, which is potion making, and she learned that if you speak in rhymes, um, potion making would uh, be easier to do. I mean, this is one of those things where it gave her some ba uh, background, uh, some a bit of background on her past. Uh, uh, we understand why she does the things that she does. And like I mentioned in the review, uh, the reason why she lives in a spooky forest in the in in a spook in a tree in the middle of a spooky forest is because Mage Meadowbrook did the same and uh, Mage Meadowbrook was kind of her an idol. I see what you got. Yeah, now now I remember that is kind of a plot hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, that was kind of a plot hole. Yeah, if Zakura knows who Mage is, ah man. Uh, let's let's just carry on. Let's just carry on. Um, da, 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 da. yeah, I feel like we we need more. Like saying that her character has been assassinated is not there for me. Like I I don't see it. Like if we can get that My Little Pony Adventures in Zebra Land, then yeah, we 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 can see how she really is after the adventure. <coughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, assassinated. Okay. The former made me angry because it's again a sign of poor world building. They, uh, when they are uncultured barbarians living in kingdoms surrounding Equestria, not saying that Parisians should have been all sticks and mud, but being on a high culture level of advancement equal to that of Equestria just feels like it was done because he didn't want to offend people of Africa uh, uh, African descent because zebras are the only horses in Africa and are therefore an, an allegory for black people uh, cause and uh, case uh, case in point the Wakanda comparison uh, this is where Jeremy really starts showing his friends for the 14 side again where in an attempt to not look racist uh, the detracts from the enjoyment of seeing far off foreign places and exploit uh, exploring cultures that are completely alien to the one we know which is the entire point of season 10 hmm I see what you mean and I understand. And yeah, I mean <coughs> I was I was surprised, I was surprised uh, in my head when we were uh, when we say oh we're going to go to um Zakura's homeland to see how she well to see how she grew up. I was thinking about huts and whatnot and more of a nomadic community or nomadic lifestyle but they subvert our expectation by saying no they have uh, landed properties they have house they have huge buildings and like Silva mentioned uh, they have that iconic building something like that I, I don't remember what he said but yes it's it's one <sighs> this is one of those things where I understand what he's doing I can't blame him for doing it but at the same time too, it's subverting expectations and that is pretty okay too. I mean, yeah, granted that uh, we didn't get what we thought we were going to get, but get something different, which is okay in my books. But at the same time too, I do understand your frustration by not getting what you want. And for this one, I, I can say much because for me, this is a free pass like okay you you probably didn't want to uh, 
uh, cause a ruckus by doing the whole oh the Africans live in huts and whatnot oh fa, 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 fa. Uh, no 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 so yeah I, I I get what you mean and I feel like you probably did the right choice on this one sorry I mean I, I have to go with Jeremy on this one I mean yeah but like I mentioned before we need that um side adventure <clears throat> While adding uh, Adabas was a good addition, I'm not so sure about Kelpies because the last time we saw one was a sea creature that mind controlled the inhabitants and used them to destroy a dam. So why are they suddenly elemental pony variants of Kelpies? This one is... Hmm. I'm I'm just gonna say this one is one of those things where hmm, the, here's the first thing. I mean Kelpies are Scottish in uh descent. So having one in Africa is already a question why are they there in the first place? But on this on the other side, uh, I feel like this could be a different genus to the Kelpies, probably. I mean, um, today I just watched a video by Gaijin Gumba talking about Kappas. And uh, there's multiple kind of variations about Kappas. So I, I'm just going to say it could be that, probably. Who knows? But at the same time, to Why Kelpies? <laughs> I mean... It's not bad, but still, I mean, maybe, maybe this could be one of those things where, um, it was an influence from real life where a lot of the Brits migrated to Africa or South Africa to be exact and became citizens there because if I'm not mistaken, South Africa has a lot of Caucasians down there. So it could be that probably inspired by that. Probably. I'm not sure. And why Kelpies? I don't know. Uh, so this one is a bit of a eh. <clears throat> okay, last one for uh, issue 89 and 90. But to finish it off, why cutie marks? Why is it established in the show that only ponies can have cutie marks? So why cutie marks? And if the excuse is that only the equines can get them, so sorry, <clears throat> we got horses of Saudi Arabia and they don't have them, so why? Why the hell would you put a cutie mark on being that it's a pony other than so dry other than to drive home the whole Farisian is equal to equestria as well as the whole bit later that zebra can't do anything even if their butt tattoos magically appear um uh, for this one i'm gonna refer to what i mentioned earlier on that zebras quote unquote yeah zebras have always had the cutie mark on their flanks it's just that we only met one zebra in our whole lifetime until season 10 and if you really want to think about it how does zakura know about cutie marks when apple bloom created a potion i think i think she created a potion um created a I forgot, create a potion or did something to get uh, or to force out her cutie marks and Zakura oh man, I, I'm forgetting about this one like no, yeah was it a potion or something yeah, it's a potion thingy it's a potion thingy Um. yeah, so Overall, I mean, well, how does Zakura know what a cutie mark is if she doesn't know 
what it is in the first place. So meaning that she has one and so on. And I do agree with you, if uh, equines can get them, then why not the po oh, sorry, um, the horses of Saudi Arabia? Um, for this one, I'm just going to theory craft and headcanon things to say that horses are a bit different from ponies because uh, their stature is totally different. And you might say the Aberex are in that same boat too. Are they equines? Are they ponies? And technically they're rhinos, but... Hmm... <sighs> it, it falls apart. But no, um, I, I believe that the cutie mark thingy has always been there. Now, this is going to be interesting when we go to the other places, like the other creatures, like the... If I'm not mistaken, Silver did mention diamond dogs or the cats. Yes, the cats are also one of the things. No, diamond dogs. Are they there? I don't remember. So yeah, um, the other creatures are going to be very interesting. Like, how do they have their thingies? So yeah, for, for this one, we had limited info about zebras. So to say that, oh, how could they have cutie marks in the first place, blah, 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 is that we don't even know um, if they don't have it. And if you take a look see at Zakura's flank, like it was a kind of a rounded sun thingy. So yeah, I, she she has one. So yeah. So that's it for uh, issue 98 and 90. And how long have I been talking? Oh, about an hour. So I'm going to wrap up this issue and continue on later next week so if you enjoy this well um, enjoy the whole um commenters edition do uh, do let me know do comment in the link below and i'll do more of it because um it's a lot of fun like uh, i know that i reply to the comments in the show so it's no big difference or it's no big deal but at the same time too I, I do like to address using my voice and using my words instead of typing them out it's more of a personal thing where i need to be quick on my feet and i don't have to um take time to properly say what i need to say <laughs> uh, which is also a bad thing at the same time too because if i say something wrong then that will make me look like an idiot. But at the same time too, I don't really mind. Uh, for, for me, it's just that I... How to put this? I, I enjoy just talking about it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Give me a second. Uh, man, what, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, this one. This one? Yes, this one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> Hmm, okay, this is just strange. What, what, why, why? Oh man, this, this is just going all over the place. My goodness. Okay, alright, alright, right. okay, got that straight now. <clears throat> so anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can catch us on, uh, you can email us at dmbshowgmail.com. If you, uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter, so the show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. <clears throat> uh, give me a second, I'm just trying to open scripts here. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page, you can also get us on ponyvive.com. Yes, there. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Leg, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.